Sinead O'Connor Empath or Narcissist, Part 10 We now turn our attention to the various behaviours of Sinead O'Connor, starting with the controversies before we move on to the kindnesses that were exhibited. In 1990, Sinead O'Connor provoked outrage from many Americans after refusing to have the Star Spangled Banner played before a show in New Jersey in 1990, resulting in her being banned from a number of radio stations in the New York City area. She explained her decision, saying, I sincerely harbour no disrespect for America or Americans, but I have a policy of not having any national anthems played before my concerts in any country, not even my own, because they have nothing to do with music in general. I am concerned, though, because today we're seeing other artists arrested at their concerts, some threatened with having their albums taken off the shelves or not even released at all. There is a disturbing trend towards censorship of music and art in this country, and people should be alarmed over that far more than my actions of last Friday night. Some might think that her refusal to have the American national anthem played shows a lack of emotional empathy for Americans. But when you place it in the context of her stance, you'll see that she's consistent with regard to a policy, which, of course, had caused offence, but it's not like it's arbitrary that she was... She adopted this policy in any country that she played in, stating we're not having the national anthem, and she articulates sound reasons as to why that was. This doesn't appear to be entitled behaviour. At first blush, it might be seen as such, but it actually seems grounded in an appropriate policy. Days later after this, however, O'Connor appeared at an all-star tribute for Bob Dylan at Madison Square Garden. She found herself immediately booed. She was due to sing Dylan's I Believe in You, but sang War, again a cappella. Although consoled and encouraged on stage by her friend Chris Christopherson, she left and broke down, and her performance was kept off the concert CD. Did she break down as a consequence of this threat to control, or was this a reaction to being booed, which upset her as a person with emotional empathy? Some narcissists, of course, would drink in the negativity, the highly provocative narcissist. And, of course, O'Connor is seen as being provocative a lot of the time. But... Such a reaction perhaps goes against her being seen as a highly provocative narcissist and rather somebody who would be affected not because of a threat to control but for reasons unrelated to that. There is then the well-publicised spat with Prince. O'Connor is perhaps best known for her cover of Prince's song, Nothing Compares to You. And in public, Prince praised her effort by saying, I love it, it's great. I look for cosmic meaning in everything. I think we just took that song as far as we could, then someone else was supposed to come along and pick it up. However, behind closed doors, O'Connor explained that her success with the track enraged Prince, despite Prince stating otherwise. She told the Times, firstly, Prince didn't like people covering his songs. Secondly, he had all these female protégés, and he was annoyed that I wasn't one of them. Thirdly, my manager, Steve Fagnoli, had been his manager, and they were involved in a legal case. On top of all of this, he was a woman-beating cunt. I'm certainly not the only woman he laid a hand on. O'Connor's third point relates to an alleged violent altercation the duo endured following the success of Nothing Compares to You. She spoke about him in a November 2014 interview with NRK, a Norwegian channel, uh, O'Connor said, I did meet him, Prince, a couple of times. We didn't get on at all. In fact, we had a punch-up. After claiming that Prince admonished her for swearing in interviews, she claimed that he became physically violent, forcing her to escape out of his house at five in the morning. We tried to beat each other up, O'Connor told Good Morning Britain in 2019. This isn't a joke. It was a really frightening experience. It was in NLA. He summoned me to his house and foolishly I went along. He was uncomfortable that I wasn't his protégé and he wanted me to be. He was wanting me to be a protégé of his and ordered that I don't swear in my interviews. I told him where he could go. According to O'Connor, the mood changed after his comment and then the situation descended into violence. He went upstairs and got a pillow and he had something hard in the pillow 
I ran out of his house hiding behind a tree, she claimed. We meet on the highway in Malibu at five in the morning. I'm spitting at him. He's trying to punch me. I had to go ring someone's doorbell, which my father always told me to do if I was in a situation like that. The interaction with Prince, perhaps a threat to her control, causing her to respond with physical violence, or simply she was looking out for herself as a consequence of his unpleasant behaviours towards her. In 1991, when she pulled out of the Grammys, despite being nominated for four awards, she explained they honoured people who have achieved material success rather than those who have, been, who have told the truth or done anything to inspire. Is this once again provocative behaviour from a narcissist or the principal stand of somebody exhibiting emotional empathy? In 1992 was perhaps her most infamous moment, which occurred on October the 3rd during a performance on Saturday Night Live. While singing an a cappella version of Bob Marley's War, she changed up some lyrics to call attention to abused youths around the world. At the end of the performance, instead of holding up a picture of an orphan child as she had in rehearsals, she held up a picture of Pope John Paul II, tearing it up and saying, Fight the real enemy. The incident left the in-studio audience in stunned silence, as NBC fielded a staggering 4,400 complaints. O'Connor later explained that her act was done in defiance of the Catholic Church and that she had been abused as a child, which she directly linked to her Catholic upbringing. She described her abuse as sexual and physical, psychological, spiritual, emotional, verbal. I went to school every day covered in bruises, boils, styes and face wells. You name it, nobody ever said a bloody word or did a thing. Of course, she turned out to be right with regard to her allegations concerning the Catholic Church. Was this her utilising a platform for the purposes of making it all about her to assert control over an organisation which had threatened her sense of control? Or was she making a principled moral stand based upon the fact that she'd been abused, she saw abuse within the Catholic Church, and she wanted to hold it to account, exhibiting a strong empathic trait of justice? She was criticised for this activity by prominent people also. Madonna came down on the side of the Catholic Church, saying, I think there's a better way to present her ideas rather than ripping up an image that means a lot to other people. If she's against the Roman Catholic Church and she has a problem with them, I think she should talk about it. Joe Pesky hosted Saturday Night Live and he held up a repaired photo of John Paul II and said if he'd been on the episode with O'Connor, he would have given her such a smack. She then found herself involved in a lawsuit from Arsenio Hall. He brought a $5 million defamation lawsuit against O'Connor with regard to her recent Facebook post accusing him of being the one to supply Prince with drugs. In a complaint filed in Los Angeles Superior Court, Hoyle ripped, Hall rather ripped into O'Connor as a desperate attention seeker, now known perhaps as much for her bizarre unhinged internet rants as her music. About a week after Prince died in Minneapolis, O'Connor wrote that Prince was a long-time hard drug user who got his drugs over the decades from Hall. The television personality says that it's absolutely false and that O'Connor is hardly in any position to know anyhow, having acknowledged that she only met Prince a couple of times. Hall also states through the lawsuit that he hasn't had any contact with O'Connor in 25 years and that her accusation of criminal conduct is extraordinarily damaging to his reputation. According to the complaint being handled by attorneys Martin Singer and Linda Goldman, ever since O'Connor posed her malicious and reckless lies about Hall on her official Facebook page, where they've been com commented on forwarded thousands of times, her brazen lies have spread like wildfire across the media throughout the United States and the world. Such a comment, if false, is a lie, and is also damaging to Arsenio Hall. To behave in such a fashion where she didn't know Hall particularly well, nor did she meet Prince particularly often, smacks of her acting with entitlement, that she's not showing accountability for her behaviours. In 2012, she alarmed fans after asking on Twitter, does anyone know a psychiatrist in Dublin or Wicklow who could urgently see me today, please? I'm really unwell and in danger. Is this a legitimate cry for help? Or is it a pity play, somebody taking to social media once again for the purpose of drawing fuel and asserting control? In 2013, she wrote an open letter to the young singer Miley Cyrus, criticising the explicit video for her hit Wrecking Ball. The message you keep sending is that it's somehow cool to be prostituted. It's so not cool, Miley. It's dangerous, she wrote. 
Cyrus's response, in which he implied O'Connor was mentally unstable, has been a common reaction to O'Connor's often outspoken behaviour. She once told an interviewer, How are you? I've dealt with this question for 25 years. Everyone treats me like a crazy person and is a great source of amusement and entertainment. Is she exhibiting a sense of entitlement to contact Miley Cyrus in that fashion? Or, alternatively, are we witnessing somebody who is expressing genuine concern for her and is acting out of emotional empathy and doesn't care that she might not necessarily know her but feels moved to want to reach out to her? We will continue in part 11 with a further examination of some of the more bizarre behaviours of Sinead O'Connor and the controversies that she's engaged in.